Happy Monday, everyone. How is everyone doing? Let's see if I can tag a couple people and then we'll start. Maybe I won't be able to do this. Let's see. I hope you guys are having a good start to your week. I know my Monday was a little wild. It was all over the place today, but whew, thankfully, thank God, it's all worked out for the day. So it is now, oh, here it is. Here's where I can tag friends. Ah, uh, okay, duh, right there. It's been a long day. I am looking forward to a good night's sleep. I don't know about all of you, <laughs> um, but I am. So it's daylight savings time that started, right? So we have a little bit of an hour that we supposedly gained for sleep, but for me, this is always a challenge for my body to adjust to. I don't know, the spring, when we spring ahead, maybe it's because of the excitement of summer coming. I always find it a lot easier. But anyway, it is National Sleep Comfort Month. So welcome to November. So I'm going to be giving a 10 tips, actually, specifically, I almost said a couple. I'm gonna be giving you all 10 tips that you can try out for a comfy night's sleep and so it may be crossing your mind to ask, you know, this is a self-love group. Why <laughs> is she talking about sleep? Well, sleep is a part of self-care and also just in general for our mental health. You know, there's different approaches. There's more than one thing that we need to do, but we do need to rest our bodies. That is part of self-love and giving ourselves that making time for ourselves to rest and recover. And we wanna be comfortable. I don't know about you, but I like to be comfortable when I sleep. Um, so feel free in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you do to, hello, to get a comfy night's sleep. But I am gonna start out with my favorite tip, and this is one that I have done for years. Um, which is declutter your sleeping space. Now, one time I was someplace and I was trying to sleep and the, it wasn't at my house, I was at someone else's house and the entire room was cluttered. And I just, I don't know if it was just psychological or whatever, but the clutter, I didn't sleep well that night. The clutter was just getting in my way. Um, somehow, maybe psychologically, but whatever it is, um, in my own personal space, I like to keep it at a bare minimum. Hi, Leona, how are you? Um, declutter things, you know, less is more in the bedroom. Um, you don't need, you know, the kitchen sink and the bathtub and and everything in, in your bedroom. And, you know, also even with plants, things like a snake plant, something that can, you know, bring in some oxygen and purify the air. How are you doing, Leona? So I'm sharing my 10 comfy nights rest sleep tips for National Sleep Comfort Month. So yes, um, just decluttering the space, making it um, cozy for you, making sure it's clean and enjoyable to be there. I think that was the reason why, you know, the, the one particular time in my memory where I was in this place that I had to sleep and it was all cluttered, it wasn't really enjoyable for me to be in. I was having to work around like someone else's mess. And so, you know, when we are enjoying the space we are in, I find it a lot easier to, you know, just sort of speak knock out leona said i feel you on this thinking about things out of place absolutely keeps me up sometimes yes right and then you could be thinking about how you need to clean it up the next day and it's just something to occupy your mind exactly leona so yes <laughs> um that's tip one tip two is invest in a new pillow so now would be a great time to think about getting a new pillow or pillows. 
Um, so sometimes, you know, over time, the pillow kind of get can get kind of flat or lumpy, and then your neck doesn't feel quite right. Um, but also, just from a health standpoint, um, we shed skin, we all do. Uh, it's part of being human. <laughs> And you know, you don't wake up and realize that you have dead skin cells on your pillow, but you do. And over time, you know, if you've had your pillow for a year or a couple years, those dead skin cells have kind of gotten into your pillow. And you know, things like dust mites can find them a great snack. And so this actually can increase allergies in people who have asthma. It can even, you know, irritate their asthma. So thinking about getting a fresh pillow that's fluffy, sometimes um, not everyone wants a fluffy pillow. Some, some people prefer a firm pillow, whatever you prefer. But, you know, something that is going to support you well so that your head and your neck and everything feel comfortable and also clean. And you can even get those little pillow liners. So there's like the pillowcase, but you can even get if you wanted um, to invest in like a little pillow liner. Uh, so that can keep your pillow a little bit cleaner and keep the allergens out and the dust mites out. And, you know, you just have an easier time breathing. And so speaking of breathing, my tip number three is you want to keep your head, it can also irritate your skin. Yes, yes, it can. Um, you're right, absolutely right, Leona. If we have um, dirty pillows or things that are not quite clean and fresh, you know, I'm not saying, you know, maybe you wash your pillow at case, you know, once or twice a week, but, you know, just like something inside the pillow, it could absolutely irritate your skin and cause acne for sure or a rash or something. So then you're not really getting your beauty rest. Um, so uh, keeping your head above the covers. Now, a lot of people sleep with their head above their covers, but a lot of people also sleep with their head under the covers. Um, this actually can be something that can cause you to not rest as completely because your body is going to give off a lot of heat. And so it's gonna actually get quite warm underneath the covers. And of course, that's usually, I think why people do go underneath the covers is because those, that's, that's a way to keep warm, especially if the space that you're in isn't very toasty. But um, it, I'm gonna actually talk about <laughs> temperature later um, as another tip. So I don't wanna jump ahead of myself, but um, it can get, you can get too hot under the covers. And the other thing is sleeping with your head under the covers can actually cause brain damage. So I didn't realize that until I was doing a little bit of research to make this video for you all. And I learned that um, there was a survey that was done. Uh, I don't think it was like a formal scientific study, but it was kind of like the scientific survey, <laughs> so to speak that uh, found that 23% of all dementia cases were attributed to sleeping with a head covered up. And this is because our brains like fresh air, right? Um, our brains do not uh, thrive when they're breathing recirculated air. And when you have your head underneath the covers, you are breathing the same air over and over and over again. So your, your body, your your blood, your brain is not getting that fresh oxygen, oxygenated, fresh, fresh oxygen, okay? It's been a long day, I cannot say the word oxygenated. Yes, I did it, I persisted. So yes, sleeping with your head above the covers is going to give you um, better airflow, it's going to keep your brain healthier, and of course we want a healthy brain that is going to keep us sharp and moving along in life. So something else that you can do uh, to get a better night's rest is exercise. Oh my God, I've had a really long day. I've been driving literally right before this, I was doing another live. Um, then I was in Danbury, Connecticut. Before that, I was in Norwalk, Connecticut. Now I'm someplace else. It has been a long day. So I am sorry that I, if I am like a little bit out of it, everyone, but anyway, so exercise. 
So what you're going to do, uh, it may not be something that you want to do right before bed because then your, your heart and your body could be a little bit too um, active inside and over energized, but um, you want to practice doing some exercise during the day. And it doesn't have to be, you know, going to the gym if you're not a gym person, or it could be, it could be anything. It could be walking, it could be jogging, it could be just dancing around your apartment at some point. But there was a study that was done, and I've learned about in my research by older adults that said that. Um, the amount of time it took older adults to fall asleep who had done exercise during the day was decreased by half. So if someone spent like an hour awake at night when they first went to bed, having that exercise um, before they at some point during the day, that cut their fall asleep time in half. So maybe it would have only taken them 30 minutes instead of 60 minutes to fall asleep. Also, there was another study that I learned about when I was doing my research that said people with insomnia, um, it increased their amount of sleep time. So they got 18% more sleep and people who suffered from anxiety um, when it was time to go to sleep or go to bed, it decreased by 15%. And so again, even people with anxiety, you know, had 15% better sleep quality. All right, so another thing you want to do, tip number five I am on, is keep your bedroom cool. Um, so I've seen different, different things for temperature, um, but it seems like it's anywhere between 66, 67 degrees and up to maybe 70 at the most um, for optimal sleep. Up, you know, our bodies do rest better at night when it's cooler. I know I like being warm, but um, the reality is my body is going to get a better night's rest um, when it is a little bit cooler. So, I mean, if you think about it, if it's a hot summer in August and it's 99 degrees outside and your apartment is, you know, boiling hot, you don't really sleep that well because your body is just too hot. So um, it's, you know, a similar concept. You don't wanna be freezing cold so that you're super uncomfortable, but around 67 to 70 would be a good temperature to keep your room. Um, so number six tip is avoiding alcohol. Um, so, Alcohol, I know a lot of times has been used or people will say, oh, you know, I'm just going to have like a little nightcap. Well, um, I, I guess in some ways it does work to a point, but um, according to studies, it does disrupt sleep patterns and it also um, changes and alters the melatonin production that your body is doing. So it kind of like just interrupts the natural cycle that your body is going through um, to get ready to sleep. Um, you may feel a little drowsy after, you know, having a nightcap. And so I think that's why people may say that that's a good thing. But ultimately, it has been shown to just kind of alter um not only alter the pattern of your sleep, but also even people who have sleep apnea, it can increase it. <laughs> and, um, you know, like I, I think about it and usually people tend to snore more, <laughs> at least that's been my personal experience, after they've had a drink or two. Um, so it's, it's not necessarily giving your body that good rest that you think it is. Um, tip number seven is something that I am myself working on bedtime and wake up times being consistent. Um, I especially like on a day that I don't have to be anywhere, <laughs> sleeping in a little bit later, going to bed a little bit later the night before, but our bodies do like consistency. So think about like a baby, right? Um, a baby has a routine that they go through, right? You try to get that baby to sleep through the night. It, it, 
as a parent. So you, you get them on a set time for the whole day, even, you know, nap time, wake up time, meal time. Um, and then like putting them to bed at a specific time and then trying to get them to wake up at a specific time. So why, you know, would we be different? You know, there are very <laughs> similar things, you know, in that sense between us and a baby. Our bodies do like routine. They thrive better when, you know, we go to bed at the same time um, or a similar time every night and wake up approximately the same time. Um, and another thing that you can do, so tip number seven, no, tip number eight is essential oils. So this is like one of my favorites because you can kind of multitask with this. So essential oils, um, it can go back to, you know, number one of creating like a clean and enjoyable space to be in. And so you have like a nice scent, something that's soothing, something that your senses enjoy, you know, smelling and gets you comfortable. Um, but also if you use specific types of essential oils, uh, such as like rosemary or eucalyptus, those things actually can help with respiratory health. So while you're sleeping and relaxing, you can also be breathing things that are good for your lungs. Um, so that's why I said you can kind of like use this step to multitask. So you're working on your rest, but also, you know, it's, it's winter season, right? Um, I know a lot of people are nervous for different reasons about um, their health in the upcoming cooler months. So, you know, why not, you know, and make your space more enjoyable, but also, you know, use a scent, like I said, like a eucalyptus or something that also helps, you know, clear and clean and um, rejuvenate your respiratory system, right? Um, so that's my tip eight. Tip nine is increasing your light exposure, like how much sunshine you get during the daytime. Um, so Yes, um, in what my research showed when I was like looking up some tips, it said that um, there was another study done um, by of older adults. And I think people maybe have studied older adults because I think as we age, uh, our bodies sometimes don't rest as well as they did when we were younger, when we were children. So um, it found that older adults who had some sort of exposure to bright, sunshine um, during the day, uh, it increased their sleep time by two hours. And two hours, that's pretty significant. Um, you know, sometimes people only, you know, run their lives on two or three hours of sleep. But if you increased the your sleep by two hours, you know, and you were only running on two, three hours of sleep, now you're running on four or five hours of sleep, which is a little bit better. Um, but yes, so I, I found that really interesting to learn that fact that just sunshine during the day um, helps get our body. Um, maybe it just makes us happier. I'm not sure what the reason is, but um, it does increase sleep time according to this study by up to two hours. And so number 10, this is something else that I've been struggling with, but I've gotten better. I've been working on it for the past year is avoiding caffeine later in the evening. So I I don't know, I always liked coffee <laughs> around four o'clock in the afternoon. That was for years when I would drink it. But, um, and, and I would go to bed and I, I would say, yeah, I slept just fine. But um, what I found in my research is that caffeine actually stays in your system for six to eight hours. So even though you are sleeping at night and seem to be sleeping, the caffeine's still in your system and it can affect like the actual deep quality of rest. So caffeine, um, like I said, stays 68 hours in the, hey, Verne, how are you? Um, stays in our body for six to eight hours. So then thinking about, you know, when do you wanna go to bed? 
If you're going to bed at 10 o'clock at night, you know, what's eight hours before that? Two o'clock. So you wouldn't really want to have caffeine after two, um, depending on when your bedtime is, right? You would adjust, but um, that is it. So those are my 10 tips um, for getting a more comfortable night's sleep. And like I said, I'm not feeling well and indeed I'm in bed now. Oh, I'm headed to bed now. I listen to my Insight Timer app to assist me with sleep. Oh, I'm gonna have to look into that. An Insight Timer app, that's interesting. I'm, I didn't know that um, existed. If you were feeling better, I'd ask you to share in the comments what that is. Um, is it like a bedtime reminder app? I'm curious. So that's definitely something to look into. But there are, love it, great tips. Oh, you're welcome, Leona, thank you. Um, and Verne also just gave us a tip as well in the comments. She said she listens to her Insight Timer app. So I'm, I'm curious, I'm going to Google it when or look it up when I get off of this live, but there are different sleep apps um, that are out there. So maybe that's something to talk about for another time. Um, Verne, I hope you feel better and get good rest. All right, I know you're always running around getting a lot accomplished, so. All right, um, have a wonderful evening, guys. I'm going to myself. <laughs> It's, uh, Leona said, it's a mental track. Oh, mental tracker is a great one. Oh, cool. I feel like I'm going to write these down. Before I end this live, sometimes things go weird with these Facebook lives. <laughs> so let me just write this down. Mental tracker and insight timer. All right, I wrote them down. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, I am going to go get my beauty rest now. So I wish you guys all a wonderful evening. Feel free in the comments below also to drop your sleep tips. Have a good one. Peace.